by Mark Claytor. There we go. Groove Star Gravity. Mark Claytor here on the Silk and Still Power Hour times three. Getting the darn cool edit back up again, but we got to go in, and he's on the line all the way from Kansas. Mark Claytor. How you doing tonight, Mark? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing better now that everything's working. <laughs> we had the stream go off. We had this go down. So it's been a night for the gremlins, I'll tell you. Yeah, hey, I've had those days before, man. It, it happens, unfortunately. <laughs> all, too, all too often at that. Yes, yes very much. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are, are what I think of a guitarist extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> you started playing in 1988. 88, yeah. And I read you graduated from Elk Valley High School in 86. Did you play band in school at all or anything? Um, or? You know, I never really did. Um, I, uh, when I was younger, before I got into, like, uh, high school, you know, I played a, a little bit in band, you know, just regular, like, band. I had a cornet or something that I tried to play, and then I, I was no good at that, so uh, they stuck me on a, a baritone. So I was a skinny little kid rocking around carrying this huge, gigantic case on and off the bus, and I uh, <laughs> wasn't really any good at that. And then I just kind of moved away from uh, music for a while. Um, but then, you know, sometime in, you know, I was always listening, though. Yeah. You know, I uh, my uh, my mom always had a uh, music playing. Uh, my dad always had music playing. And uh, after my mom and dad split up, um, my stepbrothers, who are a little bit older than I am, mm -hmm. uh, they had this great record collection. I mean, all the classic you could think of. You know, Joe Walsh, Doobie Brothers, all the you know ZZ Top, all these great great bands that uh, I just absorbed all that stuff. You know, just listening and. Uh, um, oh, big fan of music. You know, I was kind of yeah. like you, you know you've seen the movie The Jerk, right? Yeah. When it, when your toe starts tapping, yep. When his toe, I, and I just I remember I was sitting in my 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 mother's station wagon and my toe just started tapping. I was like, what is this? What what's going on down here? You know, <laughs> and I from then on, you know, just music was has is just been a just a constant part of my life. So cool. Yeah. What made you pick up the guitar over say drums, bass, as just sort of a natural um, progression, or? Well, my dad always had guitars laying around the house. You know, and uh, at that time they were acoustic guitars, so I would pick them up and I'd just kind of beat on them like a drum, you know, because I liked the sound, the hollow sound that they made. Yeah. And, uh, you know, didn't really play it, but it wasn't until I had a good friend, uh, Nathan, who was in Elk Valley School at the time, and he moved away to Brazil for a while. His dad was a missionary, and he came back, and uh, he, he played a little bit before he left, and then I lost track of everything. He came back, and I thought he was this amazing player. Yeah. So I went out and bought me a cheap pawn shop guitar, and I had him show me a few things, and uh still took a while for it to take off, but um, once I got serious about it, man, um, you know, I just, I, the minute I picked up the guitar, I knew it would be part of my life, yeah. so, cool. you know, I just worked very, very hard at it, and still do, so. Something every day, every day yeah, you learn. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely, <laughs> and if it's not there, it's, it feels like it should be, you yeah. know. <laughs> now, on, so, your web, on your website, you, you list lots of influences, can you name just a few? Oh, uh, yeah, I, you know, they vary from, from from time to time the top three but you know steve Vai is obviously the first one i he's he's a huge influence on me mm -hmm. um ingve malmstein yeah is, maybe the second one and then uh, joe satriani is a huge influence nice. and then there's many others andy andy timmons um there's so many of the great like 80s type shred players back then and yeah. there's a lot of blues players too my dad introduced me to the blues and uh so I have really absorbed a lot of the blues uh, influence um, from B.B. King to Albert King to a lot of those great, great players, and I'm really glad I, I got to see some of those guys live, too. I saw you on YouTube doing a couple of uh, Robin Trower tunes, Bridges oh, Eyes, Robin and uh, yeah, yeah. what was the other one? Two Rolling Stoned. Yeah, yeah. Love Robin Trower. Huge, huge yeah. fan. Um, got to see him live, too. Uh, wow. It took a while for that one to grasp, but that's one of those albums uh, that my stepbrothers had. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, what's the one with um, two Rolling Stones? Bridge, Bridge of Size. Size. Exactly. Yeah. Man, they used to listen to that thing all the time, and yeah. uh, that's just a, such a great album. Yeah. Once, once you stuff. hear that, it just sticks with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a huge, I don't know, man, it's just a great, it, just a great player and just all-around influence, I think. Yeah. So. You released your debut in 2012. Uprising was your second, is that your second album, Uprising? Yeah, second one, yeah. Recently yeah. released that on Something Fierce Records. They're both yeah. all instrumentals. Yeah. you ever have any plans to add a vocalist at any time? Or just gonna yes, it's funny you mention that. I'm getting ready to, um, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to release it yet, but I've been recording now for the next release, and uh, with the way the music industry is now, uh, I think I'm going to maybe just release some singles first, okay. maybe four or five singles first, and yes, the, the newest single, will, the first one I'm going to release will be called Imbalance, and it's going to have vocals on it. There's a great vocalist out of Las Vegas that will be singing on it. His name is Rick Pierce. Nice. 
so uh, I'm real happy I've been mixing and mastering that thing, and I've had it in my vehicle listening to it over and over again, and I'm really, really excited about the new the new music. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Been talking a lot with artists about social media and how, how it plays a role in everything, and I think the way we basically met, there was me, you, Chris Bickley, and, and I, I want to help, you got to help me pronounce this guy's name. Is it Torre St. Moran? Yeah, Tor, Tor, I call him Tor, Tor okay. St. Moran, yep. yep. Uh, Great player. Yeah. <laughs> Got into a little Facebook chat between the four of us one night. I think it started with Gary Moore and then went on yeah. from there. Yeah, Gary Moore's great. Yeah. Uh, was great. He's an amazing player. Um, his blues album is amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, that's social media social is awesome. Media. Yeah, it is, you know, and it's done so much for me. I've kind of embraced a lot of that, you yeah. know, as far as being able to promote and things like that. Without that, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know. It's made so much... I kind of like um, what Johnny was saying. You know, it's kind of a blessing and it's kind of a curse sometimes, too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, But I, I definitely utilize all those tools that I can. Yeah. So. Now, when it comes to the music and the guitar and coming up with a lick or something, it, you come like, you know, a la Keith Richards with satisfaction. Is it coming in your sleep? Is it come just from the cosmos? You sit around with the guitar and noodle <laughs> around? Or, or do, does some of it come planned? No, no, no. Very seldom. Uh, inspiration is one of those things that I, I really rely on. Uh, I don't... You know, I can't rely on it all the time because inspiration comes and goes. Yeah. But um, it's one of those things that, yeah, sometimes I'll pick up a guitar and uh, it just just playing a few chords and, and a song will be born from that. Um, but, you know, sometimes I can listen to an album, you know, or, or hear something on the radio that kind of inspires me. But, you know, obviously uh, everything I do is I try to do it my way and, and things like that. So um, a lot of times it depends on if I, you know, pick up a different guitar, you know, that can inspire me. Sure. Or, you know, just any, there's no rhyme or reason to it, you know. Some yeah. days it's easy, and some days it, you just have to walk away from it because it's not there, right. you know. And that's the thing, as a guitarist and as an artist, that scares me the most is that what if it never comes back, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so far I'm lucky. I, you know, it's a passion of mine, and it has been for, for a very, very long time. So, um, you know, unfortunately, um, I, I have people that kind of like what I do, even though it's maybe not in vogue right now to be an instrumental guitar player, but, yeah. you know. Uh, I just it's just me, man. That's yeah. all I can say. <laughs> there you go. Talking with Mark Claytor, guitarist extraordinaire. I, I'm just going to go with guitarist extraordinaire here on the <laughs> Silk and Steel Power Hour Times Three. Got a, got a couple of quick questions for you. You're going to do uh, an a la put it on the table there, a segment out of that metal show. You know, awesome. Uh, if who would you like most to collaborate with? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I got to go with you know Steve I obviously I mean I haven't met that guy I haven't met him yet that'd be okay. a huge you know he'd, that'd be one I don't get starstruck often you know because I've met famous people before but he would be one that'd be like uh you know I wouldn't know what to say and things like yeah. that so um but you know being in more of an independent musician too I've met there's so much great music out there by yes these, and, I mean it's amazing mm -hmm. you know when I listen to some of these guys and some of these guitars like Chris Bickley's one that you mentioned um, absolutely uh Torse Moore you know him uh some of these guys are just just so great and you just wonder and you go how are these guys not superstars? You know, yep. it's, it's, it's amazing to me. And, and I'm very grateful that I've been able to discover some of these guys that I probably would have never heard of, um, you know, maybe, what, 10, 15 years ago? I don't know. Maybe yeah. longer than that. But, but, you know, there's some great musicians out there making some great music. Yeah, so. absolutely. I agree with you. Um, I've discovered so much doing this show, yeah, including oh, yours. I, I bet. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. If, if you could tour with, with someone, you know, as, as like a co-headliner or, you know, something, something like that, would you, would you go with Steve Vai again or you got something uh, different? You know, there's so many. I think Andy Timmons would be cool, you yep. know, and I'm not comparing myself to those guys at all, but, sure. you know, um, just some of those, some of my peers and some of the, you know, Paul Gilbert, there's just so many of those guys out there, um, Joe Sodger and all those guys, um, yeah. any of those guys, just, I could, I'd, I wouldn't know what to do if something like that happened, you know? <laughs> yeah. If, if so, you could join one band, which, which band would you want to join? Ooh, oh, man. Um, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a band I've been listening to a lot. Uh, lot. Uh, my friend um, from Sweden introduced me to them, and, and they're just a rock and roll band, but they're called Fatal Smile. Yes. I love those guys. Great band. Know, like, yes, great band. I've been listening to those a lot, and he just introduced me to another song of theirs, and I'm, I'm just blown away by some of, you know, it's not that hard, but man, does it rock. Um, so, yeah. it, you know, I don't know, man. There's so many out there that I would probably just pack up everything and go if I had the <laughs> chance, you know. <laughs> it, say, say a young player comes up to you who's, who's looking, you know, he's, he's perfecting his craft on the guitar. He's just starting out. What advice would you give to someone just, uh, just starting out in the music business? Yeah, you know, I taught lessons for years, and um, I now, I'm, I'm in, can you hear that static? 
a little bit, but it's, it's okay, nothing. Okay, sorry, it must be my phone. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I've taught, I've taught guitar for years, and it's just one of those things that, you know, and now I'm in the position that people are kind of, you know, they look up to me, and how do I do things? So, I mean, just be yourself. I mean, and it, do do it because you love it. That's the only reason to do anything, really, mm-hmm. is do it because you love it. Um, don't get in it for any other reason. Yeah, it'd all be great to have the money and all that stuff, but... You know, I can't explain to you how many times that, um, it's kind of like, I used to ride motorcycles, too. Yeah. Uh, when I pick up a guitar, my mind goes to a different place. Yeah. It's just in a complete different place. All my cares and worries, just kind of when I'm creating in the studio, it, or the beat lab, as we like to call it, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it all just it all just kind of goes away. And that's the way it was for me when I rode motorcycles. I could get on a motorcycle, and it would just, all those cares and worries would go away. So, um, that's a, that, so you know, when you, enter, when you find something that you can connect with on that kind of a level or something like that, Yeah. You know, just put your heart and soul into it, and I truly believe, I truly believe, even in these days of overprocessed music and things like that, people will see the true talent, no matter what you do. You know, you got to start out with a, ba- a good product, right? But you know, I mean, it's just about developing your talent and develop your own voice. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's that's what that's all I can say, really. I think. Cool. So, and practice. Practice, yeah. practice, 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 practice. Oh, <laughs> a lot, man. <laughs> you, you alluded to you got some tracks coming out with a vocalist. What else yes. is in the future for Mark Claydor? Uh, I'm hoping. I've been working on a great for, with a couple of great musicians over in Springfield, Missouri, and one is one guy keyboard player is named Jimmy Pitts, and he'll be on this new song I'm going to release too. Cool. I um, mean, he's very well known. Uh, he's played with Marco Miniman and a bunch of these other guys. He's a great keyboard player. I'm hoping to put together a string of clinic dates. Um, that I'll be out doing some guitar clinics and things like that. I'm really excited about that. I'm even honored that somebody would want to sit there and ask me what I do. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so right. but yeah, I'm really excited about that. I want to. I'm going to work hard on getting these these songs out, and then I'm going to. I've already got some other ideas together for another batch of songs, and I'll eventually put out another CD. Even though that's kind of not cool to do nowadays too, but um, definitely going to do that too. So I'll put out. Write four or five songs, and then I'll record four or five, and then I'll put out another CD. So. Well, I mean, well, I mean you've got to keep it flowing, too, because, you know, you take any sort of time off nowadays. It's such an yeah. instantaneous world. You're yesterday's news, you know? Very much so. And I, I've been very lucky that with Uprising, uh, you know, people are still kind of kind of discovering that. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm very flattered by that, that people are still kind of seeing that and coming around to it, even though it's been a, it's been out there over a year. Yeah. So so now that, they, you know, the people are still talking about it is, is a good thing, especially nowadays. In Absolutely. Absolutely you know, yep. fast download music world. So, yeah. 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 It's an instantaneous awesome. world. Very and much so. And we're all running short on time all the time, too. You know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we never have time for anything, you know. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank you for taking the time and chatting hey. with Mark Claytor here on the Silk and Still Power Hour Times 3 on 90.7 WJSC-FM. Appreciate you very much taking the time to talk to me tonight. Hey, man, not a problem. And thank you very much for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. We're going to launch into Distant and Deadly because that features uh, Chris Bickley on the second lead. And on bass, you got Mike Bass. Is it Garen? Yes, Garen. Mike Garen, Garen. yep. On bass. So we're going to play that one. If you can hang on uh, just a second, I want to say goodbye to you off the air. All right, man. No problem. All right, here we go. We're going to launch into uh, Mark Claytor, Distant and Deadly.